Let's see what the camera looks like over here. Oh, that looks much better. All right, we're in Texas now. That's not what this video is about. That's the next video. This video, we're gonna talk about, a couple weeks ago, we went to Oklahoma City to visit some friends and we made some end tables for a client. So that'll be really cool. Let's go. Uh -huh. All right, so we started by going to Vintage Reclaim Lumber with Johnny from Johnny Builds while we were in Oklahoma City. Vintage Reclaim Lumber is a lumber store. They take stuff out of the dump. They get calls of people just, you know, disassembling things and they repurpose the wood by either selling it or making projects out of it. So it's a really cool business model. Uh, they also do a lot of high-end client builds. Mm -hmm. So they have like epoxy river tables and all sorts of yeah. cool things like that. It was just cool to see because we didn't really have a place like that near us um, before we moved down here. It was just like general hardwood dealers. So to see a place that specialized in like vintage and reclaimed lumber was awesome. Well, there was a place in North Dakota, but they didn't have quite the volume that this place did. Yeah, so it was really cool too. to see a large volume in a big city and sort of how they handled it. So that was neat. So they ended up supplying us with lumber, which was really cool. Our client wanted more of a modern industrial look for their end tables and we're like, perfect. So we found some flooring from a shipping container that was gonna work out perfectly. Um, and it was just really cool that that's the stuff that they keep around at all times. So that's what we ended up using. So we were in Johnny's shop and we had to first knock out all the bolts and stuff that held the flooring into the shipping container and then we had to drill those out so we could put oak plugs in there and eventually we filled that with epoxy. Planed them down uh, to thickness at Johnny's shop and then that was pretty much all the milling that we had time for there. This, this project was probably the biggest time crunch that we've ever had to, to mm -hmm. do a project in. Not because the client wanted the, the stuff so early, but we were just doing a lot. We had two collaborations to do. We only were gonna be in Oklahoma City for a couple of days. Yeah. My dad has a, a, a nice shop, but I really didn't wanna tackle any projects there because I didn't wanna be halfway through something. And then we were both also looking for a house down here in Texas. So we just had a lot on our plates and we right. needed to get this done and get it wrapped up. So basically we had to get everything done uh, in their shops. Like the legs we had to finish in um, Richard from 42 Fab's shop because we didn't have a welder on pack that we could, you know, come home to and finish them up in our own garage. Speaking so. of which, so after the wood with Johnny, we went and visited Richard from 42 Fab. If you don't know Richard, he does a lot of CNC plasma cutting, metal fabrication and stuff like that. Like a lot of stuff. It's and awesome. it was really cool to see his business too. We'll talk about that in a bit, but we hopped over to his shop to start working on the legs. But before we started working on the table legs, we needed to get some welding practice. So Richard set us up with a couple of his do-it-yourself weld kits, which he sells on his website. There's a link in the description with a discount code. But yeah, they're just little kits that he CNC plasma cuts, he mails them out to you and you can practice welding. So he gave us one of the small chimeneas to burn wood scraps and stuff like that in our backyard. But that's a really good way to practice different types of welds before you need to do it on a project. So if you're new to welding or you just need a little bit of experience before you jump into the project itself, you can grab a couple of these kits for pretty cheap and just put them together before you start welding if you don't weld all that often. So he just gave us a lot of help and tips and tricks on how to weld a little bit better before we started screwing up what little material he had uh, in stock for us to make the legs out of. We've got to cut these rectangles out, weld them back together and that makes up the bottom of the fire pit. Okay. And then all of these ones, you just, you know, stick the like two that. of them together like that. So you get a whole bunch of practice doing butt welds like this. It's yeah. Flat on flat. Then we're gonna get outside corners. And then when we do the bottom, we'll get inside corners.
chimney. I think chiminea. it's actually chiminea. That's what, is it like little chiminea? Is that what the kids actually called on your? Yeah, that's the small. What's the difference? Small chiminea. One small and one big. Duh. Oh, I thought you were talking about chimney. Anyway, I welded it. It was fun. I learned a lot. It is hard to keep the welds straight. Um, here, here are Richard's welds. Here are my welds. They're very different. Um, but anyways, it was really fun to learn. It was really cool now i have an awesome decoration that can say i welded so awesome to get practice with such good equipment um he's also a really good teacher so thank you and uh take a look at my good looking chiminea if you guys want your own kit we'll have a link down in the description you guys can get 10 percent off with code jenny and davis you want a kit <laughs> <laughs>a super fun weekend or week weekend i don't know a couple three days, days hanging out with richard um he's been more than generous please go check out his channel if you're interested in metalworking at all he does a lot of the price breakdowns like we do and stuff like that so anyway we finally completed these little end table stands we're gonna take them back home and finish them up at my dad's shop but yeah go check out richard he's got some awesome do-it-yourself weld kits if you want to check those out we'll have a link and a discount code in the description too where you can pick one of those up and uh I forget yeah. anything else. Thanks for coming That's by. It. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. It was fun. Woo! Cool transition. Cool <laughs> transition, bro. So we ended up pulling it all off. It worked, believe it or not, and the client was super happy with how the tables turned out. the end tables I think they turned out really nice yeah all done um, we filled these cracks by the dowels with black epoxy hello we can't do this <laughs> okay so we filled these cracks around the dowels with black epoxy and sanded it really really smooth so now it is all one flush surface and it looks really really sorry and it looks really really nice that is all now you can go oh my gosh <laughs> Well, people have been saying in the comments, more Doberman, so. There you there go. You, there you have it, there's more Doberman. Um, but here's our pricing breakdown. So before we get into that, go ahead and comment down below. Tell me what you think we priced these at, and we'll see how close you get. So things were a little wonky with this project. This was not our normal thing because we had to drive to Oklahoma City. We were, you know, in between four hours of sleep every night. This was just not our typical project. We weren't we even could, building in our own shop. We just kind of had to shoot from the hip a little bit with our pricing on this one. But that's why it's so important to have a really rigid pricing structure. So when something weird happens or you're not in your shop or you're on location or something like that, you can sort of ballpark your own prices and get pretty close to what it would have been if you built it in your own shop. And we're gonna go ahead and do the pricing breakdown as if we had to do it in our own shop. Right, because if they come, if this same client comes back to us again now and wants you know, two nightstands instead of two end tables, we still have to be able to give them a price for those nightstands that's consistent with what they paid for their end tables. So when you add up materials and labor costs and a little bit of markup, you end up with a price of about $250 per table. And the client was super happy to pay that. And it, it, again, it was kind of a wash. It sort of worked out for us that we got to do some collaborations and got some material for free. 
But if I was doing it in my own shop and had everything set up and ready to go, that's how much I would charge for this project. And I think they turned out fantastic. And it was fun to work with like a modern industrial style. We've done a couple of things like that, but not so much when the client was like, it must be modern industrial. So that was a lot of fun because that um, set the precedent of what kind of wood we had to look for and everything like that. You don't want to miss any new videos that we have coming up. We've got a lot of stuff coming up with the, yes. the new shop and the new business model. If you're somebody who runs a woodworking business or wants to start selling some of your work as a hobbyist woodworker, we'd love to share our tips and tricks with you as we get started in a new area. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps share the video with more people so we can help more people succeed in the woodworking arena. Mm -hmm. Also, we got new shirts. If that's your thing and you want to help support us, we got new shirts to celebrate our move to Texas. So check the link in the description and you can get yourself one of these awesome shirts and it helps support the channel too. Yep, we have a bunch of new designs on there. These are just two of them. We added a couple more on our website as well. So yeah, thanks for taking a look and let's jump into the tips. All right, so pretty much the highlight of the trip for us, it was cool to get to make stuff, cool to get to hang out with some old friends and everything, but probably the highlight of our trip was getting to talk to other business owners. Yes. Um, and sort of looking through the lens of how they operate their business to help us out as we get started. So I'll say the bottom line is a lot of what they're doing is things that we already practice and know and do and that's really encouraging you know a lot of time us especially we want to try to find new answers and new solutions but sometimes the same old solution is what works and it's really cool to see other people succeeding with the ideas that we've already sort of happened upon or learned from and discovered on our own so that's been really exciting um, and it's also nice to see them tackling issues that we haven't like come up come upon yet um, like employees for example uh, Richard from 42 fab has a couple of employees we don't have employees yet maybe you know one day we would like to but it was cool to get questions answered on like how you do that how you handle it how you get started the process um, so we definitely learned a couple of things that we may hit later on down the road and one of the coolest like the, the one of the most fascinating parts of it specifically was when Richard took us to the arts district in Oklahoma City and he just showed us around almost every single store he either built a sign for some mm -hmm. furniture for or something like that so that was really cool I'll show you a little bit of footage from that all right what's up so we're in Oklahoma City and uh, we're with Richard from 42 fab hey, hey. He just took us out to lunch it was great now he's just going to take us on a tour because I think he sold something to every person in Oklahoma City. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Call me. Call me. <laughs> so we're just going to go for a little tour and uh, see some of the cool stuff that he's built. Yeah, so it's going to be cool for us to sort of see how his business works and uh, just get to ask him a whole bunch of questions and everything because, you know, we're trying to start our woodworking shop and we just want to see how his business structure is set up. This is a sign that he just made. He just put a video out on this. Uh, he's got LED lights at the bottom. And why don't you talk about it? I don't, why, do I, why am I talking about your sign? This is a sign I just made. I just put a video out about it. So <laughs> LED lights down here at the bottom. And uh, yeah, I think this is 10 gauge, might be 12 gauge steel. Um, put some studs on the back with a stud welder. That's from trueweldstudwelding.com. Thank you, sponsor. And went into this plate. Fortunately, with this one, we could actually take this sheet off and actually weld the studs into place. So it made this a super clean install, you know, you don't see any fasteners or anything back here. Uh, I really like this type of kind of simple but really sharp build. And what would you, what did you bid for this job if you don't mind sharing? Uh, 650. Okay. Part of a bigger job, but right. this part was 650. Okay. And then we added the lights afterwards, so it went up a little bit more. I don't remember offhand what that was. Okay. Let's we'll spin around this way. Richard <laughs> did all these, all these benches and tables. Um, so how, what do you say when somebody approaches you or how did you meet the person that you kind of got into this with? I don't know what the first project we did together, but it's, um, it's a guy who has his finger in a lot of different restaurants pies. Once you become the person that can do the thing that people need, you get callbacks and it, it's a snowball you were talking about, you know, it just kind of takes off and, and grows. And so you get asked. You know, one day it's, can you build a sign? The next it's, can you fix this bench? And then can you build new benches? And then whatever, it just grows from there. You were saying everybody in this little area, it just, ha somebody's the half owner of this yeah. and his buddy's the half owner of three other things and then it's just all yeah. layered, so. Once you, once you get in with that group, you're good. But at the same time, if you mess a job up, everybody knows about it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, you, you've, you're gonna pay for it. So. Yeah, I believe it, so yeah. that's super cool. The uh, 
the Weld It Yourself kit, kind of shipping zone. We've got pre-made kits ready to go out here. If somebody orders one, for example, the rocket stoves, you can have the option to order legs with them. So say they wanted four inch legs, we'd do that. It gets double bagged into a branded envelope because the post office loves to ruin these and shipped out. All sorts of, uh, all my kits are designed to fit into flat rate boxes so that I can send them anywhere in the country for, you know, free shipping. I know exactly what it's gonna cost. And where should people go if they wanna practice welding and get a little kit? Man, you could, you could check out 42fab.com. You could even go with uh, some of those. Well, we got holidays coming up, right? You wanna make a rose? Oh, wow. Get one of those, you cut all those little bridges out, heat it up with a torch, bend it. We could make one of these tomorrow if you guys want to. That would be Sweet. really cool. It was also really cool to hang out with one of the owners at Vinninger Claim Lumber. Lost. It was just it was just super cool to meet and hang out with those guys and just sort of see how their business mm -hmm. operates. Look at their whiteboards on the wall and see projects, you know, just starting, closed, paid in full. Right, timelines. Right. And, yeah. Again, it was it was a lot of the stuff that we've already been thinking, but it was really cool to see someone succeeding at scale with something that we've sort of had imagined in our brains. So that was really right. awesome to see. And seeing their structure is like getting the wood, milling the wood, but also having a showroom where they sell a lot of the stuff that they build and finish. Right, because they're running two businesses. They're running yeah. a lumber store and they're running a custom furniture business too. So it was really cool to see how they've got everything clearly divided between the several different buildings and everything else. It was just, it was awesome to see, so. So yeah, we are in Texas now. This is our shop that eventually will get up and running again. But anyway, um, we're super excited to be here, but it is very overwhelming because we have so much stuff to do. Like we've got one half of our lives where we're like trying to get just the inside of our house ready so we have somewhere to sleep and, and like take a shower. Disgusting. Yeah, we had this to house do... is in a great location, but oh my gosh, the previous tenants, I don't think they ever cleaned the yeah. entire time they were here. We were so much such as life, we you were, know. We were scrubbing on our hands and knees for three days straight. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, still kind of dirty. Yeah, but. we'll get there. But, and then there's the other like half where we're completely putting the shop together and getting the business up and running. And it's it's been really hectic. And not to mention, we're also getting stuff ready for, you know, our other jobs and just, yeah. So we haven't really been able to do much. We don't really know anybody here yet. Um, we know nobody. Yeah. We, we have one friend who was with us in North Dakota. His family is still here, but we still haven't met him. Those are the only contacts yeah. we have in the city. So we're starting all over from scratch. And we're gonna talk about that more in the next video. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks to all of you who reached out and gave us support and said welcome to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so nice to be back in the South where everybody's just nice and more nice and inviting. I mean, we've lived, both of us, so we've lived in just about every corner of the country so far. and by far the most hospitable and friendly people are in the South. So yeah. anyway, it's really nice to be back uh, home for me. Jenny's kind of getting used to it too. She's from the Midwest. It's just hot. It's very hot and humid, but that's okay. I love it. We'll get there. But you can do stuff in the heat. I know, I like know. Like when it's cold outside, you're bundled up and you can't move because your body freezes. I just don't but know what heat, I'm gonna do in you July. Just get over it. I, we'll see, it'll be great. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, like I said, the journey starts here. So if you're curious on what it takes to start at rock bottom and just put together an entire shop from scratch, stay tuned because we've got a lot of that for you. See you later. Yeah.